What's up guys, September is here and you know what that means, a new planning guide and I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is that I've upgraded this planning guide. I'm gonna have the schedule of all of the units that you can see on the screen and how much visual you can expect to have at that time and also the expected release dates for all these units. And thank you to some of our viewers for commenting and leaving those suggestions in the comments below. We really appreciate it. The bad news is I spilled an entire bag of frozen raspberries in my freezer this morning when I was making breakfast. So that's gonna be a pain in the ass to clean up and I'm probably gonna be finding raspberries for the next few months. Okay, Final Fantasy Tactics is out of the way, and that means we probably have a really clear view of what you want on your account. So you've probably either pulled for the units or gotten the units you wanted, or you either didn't, um, but this is probably the biggest event that's hit the game so far. So a lot of people were saving up a lot of visuals. So we're on the other side of that, or we're right in the middle of it, but you should have a pretty good idea of how much visual you have to save up for the next couple of months and what banners you need to save up for. So we're gonna take a look at a lot of those units that are coming up if you guys like the video like subscribe and let's jump right into it the first unit we're going to talk about is idrilla and we've been talking about her for a little while and she's almost here she's a calculator unit so a lot of her abilities are going to hit on either height or levels she is very interesting She's extremely overpowered in certain PvE situations and certain PvP situations, and then she's sort of unusable in other situations. So she's a really interesting unit. And the last thing I'm gonna say about her is the only way I would probably pull on this banner, and it's not to say that she isn't really good, and it's not to say that she isn't a really fun unit to use as well, because she's probably gonna be one of the more fun and unique units to use for a long time in this game. But the only way I would actually pull on this banner is if you're building like an all water team. So if you have Miranda built up and you have like a three star or four star siren card, so you can build a team that's based entirely around water attack, she's gonna be amazing for a team like that. But other than that, I think she's a little too niche of a unit to focus on as a free to play player. And again, that's not to say that she isn't really good. I just think that there's more versatile units in the next couple of months. And for me, she's going to be a pass for free to play outside of those specific situations that I mentioned. Moving on here, we have Dark Stern. And you already know how I feel about premier units for free to play. They are complete no go. Now, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about premium units because a lot of you guys took umbrage with the fact that I ranked Gilgamesh so low on my free to play rankings. And it's not that Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh or Dark Stern are bad units. I want to reiterate that. They are very, very good units. It's just the fact that their shards cost double Vizor, you really need to think hard about whether that's worth the investment or not. Would you rather have two ultra rare characters at level 99 or either one of these two? And yes, they're really good units. And if you happen to pull Gilgamesh or Dark Stern, you absolutely should be running the hard quests and getting one shard per day. But I probably wouldn't be dumping the 60,000 Vizor into pulling shards for them from the shops because that's an awful lot of Vizor and you're gonna have to be really patient with your account if you're free to play or light spender if you wanna build up these units the right way. So Dark Stern, super high damage, uh, tank buster, a lot of good things going on, but for free to play, um, I wouldn't pull on the banner. I would just wait to see if you actually pull them and then you can go in for them on hard quests daily and just get that one shard per day. All right, normally we don't mention vision cards or espers on these planning guides. And there is one thing that I want to mention, and this is right after Dark Stern, you're going to have the Fenrir vision card and esper come out. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is this is actually something you might want to look into even as free to play or light spenders. And the reason is this magic resistance on the card and less for the card, because as I've said before, free to play, it's tough to chase vision cards and max out vision cards. Like you, you just have to take what you get. But if you want to pull on this banner, the Esper for Fenrir actually has magic resistance on its board. So it's really good for characters like Rain and Agrius or anybody you're going to run as a magic tank, like even Dario can benefit from it. So Fenrir's a really good Esper to have on your account. And this is something you may want to think about when this banner comes around. And I wouldn't dump a ton of Vizor into getting the Esper. It's not going to make as much of a difference as a unit might but it will be a significant thing to pull. So I might pull like two or three times on this banner just to see if you can pull it. And it's not limited either, so you can always pull it in the future, but it is always good to try and grab that Esper while it has the rate up on the banner. 
All right, moving on, and now we have Glacila. And Glacila is the unit that pretty much everybody has been waiting for, at least after Final Fantasy Tactics. And like I mentioned in the last planning guide, Glacila is going to be the next Orlando type unit, at least in my opinion, and from the things I've seen and read. She's basically going to be completely busted in a lot of different facets of the game, uh, PvP, PvE, uh, the fact that she's pierced damage, she really does a lot of damage to the tanks right now because the tanks that are in the game, I believe Warrior of Light and Engelbert, are weaker to pierce damage than they are the other types of damage. So is going to be the all-around best unit. and. This is one of the reasons why I would pass on Adrilla and especially Dark Stern, and it's one of those reasons you might want to really think about whether you're going to spend Vizior on Fenrir or not. Um, you will need a good spear, and there aren't a lot of good spears to make Glacila real good. Um, when she comes back, the Ice Lance event will come back as well. So even if you are going to pull on Glacila or you don't pull on Glacila, you want to grab that Ice Lance for Victoria or for really any of your spear wielders because it's going to be the best spear for a long time. But Glacila is an absolute go for. I think this is your stopgap between the two collaboration events of Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy IV, which we're going to talk about at the end of this video. Uh, Glacila is my number one recommendation in the next three months. So if you're going to pull for a unit, she's the one to go for. And she's not limited either, so you can always pull her later as well. Next up, we have Laswell, and I, I like Laswell. I really think he's good. And again, I've said this before in the planning guide, you're going to need this katana that he has to make him really, really good. And at this point, most players should be able to get this sword that he has, because I believe it's in the King Behemoth event, which might be kind of difficult for some players, but most players should be able to get a few recipes for this. Um, but Las Laswell's a really good damage dealer. He's got a lot of versatility, but I just don't think he's as good as Glacila. So if you're just looking for the better unit and something that's going to be a lot more versatile on your account, then Glacila is the way to go. However, Laswell is going to be a really good unit. He's like a really beefed up samurai, and he's got this dragoon subclass, which can be really interesting to use. Laswell's a really good unit, but I would just recommend that you pull on the Glacila banner instead. And I still do believe that Laswell has one of the coolest artworks in the entire game and character design. So that's the reason alone to even pull for this unit. He's one of the cooler designs as well as Rain. Both of them are designed really, really well. They have great artwork, they have great kits, and they did a really good job bringing those units over from Brave Exvius. Okay, now we move into another magic wielder, and this is Scar. And Scar is basically like a lightning version of Medina, and I know he's not exactly like that because he's got this Staff Mage sub and he's got Time Mage sub, so he plays a little bit differently than Medina. But he's basically lightning Medina, maybe a little less damage, a little more tankiness, and the versatility of having that Time Mage sub. So I would think of it this way, if you want to build like an all magic team, so if you have high leveled up cards like Trousseau or Rama, Scar is going to be a really good unit for your account. So I would say if you're primarily basing your team around magic damage, you could save up your Vizor, not spend on Glacila and go for Scar instead. Um, for me personally, he's going to be a just pull when you get him type unit. He's going to be a really good unit, but again, I would only really go for him if you're able to maximize his damage with those vision cards or you have a really high level platinum rod, for example. So if you have your account built around magic users, Scar is going to be very, very powerful for you. Next up, we have a unit that a lot of people have asked me about, and that's Howlet. And Howlet's got a new job class here. This is going to be, I think it translates to something like Rune Knight. And basically, he's going to be another wind attacker. And the thing that makes him really unique is that he's got an ability that reduces wind resistance, I believe. Yep, right here. So it adds like wind in peril, I think that's what they call it. And I believe he's the first unit to add this. So basically, how it's going to be here as a unit that maximizes your wind team. So if you already have Lucia built up, Yerma, you have the Tetra Sylphid card, how it's going to make a wind team even better for PvE events. Um, so he basically makes wind teams better, but I think you really have to think hard about investing in Howlet's banner, simply because you have the Final Fantasy IV event that comes not too long after it. So I might pull a couple times on this banner because my account is really geared towards wind teams, but a couple times means probably no more than six or 8,000 Vizior, and if I happen to pull them, I happen to pull them. If I don't, then I just am gonna move on and save for Final Fantasy IV or some banners after that. 
Lastly, let's talk about Luasa, and Luasa is basically a fire unit of Lucia. Let's just keep things simple. She's got dual gunner and gunner just like Lucia does, so she's gonna have pretty much all of the same abilities. Uh, the advantage that Luasa is going to have is she has this soldier sub job. So she has access to self-sacrifice to give herself way more attack than Lucia does. So she'll do a little bit more damage, but she has that lost versatility of Lucia where Lucia has the ranger sub job. So she has sharpshoot and some of those other abilities like charge that give her access to the other height levels. Uh, gunner and dual gunner can't really hit other height levels that well. Whereas the Ranger class, you can shoot down and up elevations pretty easily. So Luasa is going to be higher damage, basically a fire version of Lucia. I don't want to complicate things here. So if you have an account geared towards ranged units or gunners, so if you have Mustadio, Lucia, Frederica, you have Frederica's Dream Vision card, there's a lot of different things that would be reasons to pull for Luasa or to add her to your team. In addition, if you have a fire team, so we've talked about Delita and Rain being so good, um, you can add Luasa into that team as well, and she's going to do extra damage to units that have that fire in peril on them. So that's also something to consider if you have Delita and Rain, or e either or, because they both have fire in peril. Luasa can pair really well as a backline attacker with either of those two. And finally, let's talk about Final Fantasy IV, and I'll keep this pretty brief. I won't dig into these characters too much because they're quite a ways off, so we'll probably dig into them a little bit more in the next planning guide. But Final Fantasy IV is going to launch probably about the end of November or December, so a little bit after Thanksgiving time. And just so you know how much Vizior you're going to need to save up, and you have uh, Cecil, Kane, and Rosa will come with this banner. Um, you guys have seen with Final Fantasy Tactics 1 and 2, you should know by now how much visual you need for these limited time characters. Um, you're going to need 40,000-ish, 35, 40,000 to pull on these. So make sure you plan accordingly if you're really looking for these banners. Um, I believe JP had a guaranteed step up for Cecil and it wasn't paid, I believe. Maybe I'll double check on that, but I think it was a free visual step up to guarantee Cecil. So there's always that to look forward to. If you're a little short on visual coming into this event, you could always go for Cecil, but Kane is apparently the unit everybody wants. He just is destroying all of the tanks and JP right now with the piercing. Anyway, I wanted to mention Final Fantasy IV just so you know when that's coming out and you know that you need to save up a lot of Vizior if you really want to go for these characters. And I know a lot of people play War of the Visions not because they're just wanting a good mobile game, it's because they're playing off the nostalgia of Final Fantasy. So these collaboration events, we all want these units from the old Final Fantasy games. I mean, I really wanted Final Fantasy Tactics units. I'm really looking forward to Final Fantasy VI when it comes out because that's one of my favorite and obviously everybody is going to be looking for like Cloud and Sephiroth when those come out. So. Yes, limited banners are tough for free-to-play players, and I know a lot of people have commented in my comments on a lot of the videos saying you really shouldn't go for limited time units, but you can if you plan accordingly. So Final Fantasy IV, just so you know when that's coming, I'm putting the release date on there, and we'll dig into these units a little bit more on the next planning guide. All right, guys, that's it. And the last thing I want to mention here at the end of the video is if you are free-to-play and you're thinking about spending on Visure, holy cow. I did not know this was a thing. <laughs> I didn't know there's an insert you can put into your Weber grill to turn it into a pizza oven, which is like, this looks amazing. So if you're thinking about spending on Visior and you have a Weber grill, maybe, maybe spend on this instead. I have a friend who just told me about this yesterday and I think this looks awesome. Anyway, guys, have a good time. Let me know in the comments what you think about the upcoming units and which ones you're going for. And we'll see you guys next time.